Mr. Harris here and welcome to a new video of chapter 6.3. In this video we're going to talk about dissolving. Okay, so we'll be describing what dissolving is using the particle theory. So first off we need to know what is a solute, solvent, and of course a solution. So just to recall we already learned this in chapter 2 in the first term. So a solid usually would be used for something like a salt or in this case sugar and a solvent would be usually a liquid in this case of water and the solution is when you combine uh, the solute and solvent together okay so now pay attention to the diagram over here the sugar when you add it to water it undergoes a process called dissolving so it dissolves in water and eventually you get a solution so what actually happens to the particles of the solute in this case the sugar and what happens to the particles of the solvent in this case water during this dissolving process so again this topic has to mainly be dealing with particles so well, let's have a look in details what happens okay let's use this example I have a beaker of water and I'm gonna add a purple crystal okay I'm gonna add that in and I'm not going to allow it to stir, so I'm not going to stir it. I'll just leave it and wait for a few minutes to see what happens. So after a few minutes, you'll start to observe that the purple color coming from the crystal, of course, will start to spread into the water over here. Okay. And then right after a few more minutes, eventually the whole beaker turns into purple. And you will also notice that the crystal will become smaller and smaller eventually should i say disappear yeah let's say that eventually the crystal would disappear now in fact actually it's not really disappearing it it has just dissolved into the water so it's not really disappearing but it shows this phenomena okay so particles of the solute in this case, which was the purple crystal, did it stay together in the solvent or did it move apart? Of course, as we just saw, it spread, right? So it moved apart. So particles of the sol solute will actually always move apart, would move apart in the solvent during dissolving. When the purple crystal dissolves in the water, its particles would move apart and mix with the water molecules. So let's look at the particle model diagram over here. So over here, the orange ones are the solvent particles. The green ones are the solute particles. So originally, when you add the solute into the solvent, it would look something like this. Okay, the solute as eventually, the solute, what happens is it will be if evenly distributed among the solid solvent particles so this is when you just place it inside so you just placed the purple crystal and after a few minutes when you allow it to sit after a few minutes eventually the solid particles will start to be evenly distributed okay so they will take up the space in between the other solvent particles okay and the crystal will eventually reduce in size and the water will slowly slowly turn into purple in color so as I just told you the purple crystal it seems to have been disappeared but is that actually the case or should I say does this mean that the mass of the crystal is lost too of course, that is not the case. Actually, for example, if we take another example, when we get grab some salt and we add it to water, it, look, it seems like it has disappeared, right? But actually, the mass will remain the same. It stays the same. It's not that it has disappeared. It's just been dissolved. It's actually still present inside the salt solution here. So the dissolved substance, in this case, the salt is still present in the solution, but we just can't see it. Okay, but we are sure that we are certain that the salt is still present inside. 
So, based on this, this rule of conservation of mass, this is what we talk about. Conservation of mass meaning the mass does not change. So whatever you had prior to the reaction, it will remain, the mass will remain the same after the reaction. Say for example, over here I had 10 grams of salt and for example I had 20 grams of water. So in the beginning of the reaction total I had 30 grams, right? So if I add these two together, I had 30 grams of reactants. So the product over here, the solution should also be 30 grams. As I said, the mass remains the same. The mass is conserved. The mass will not change. So to summarize, the total mass of the solute and the solvent, they do not change, does not change in dissolving. In other words, mass is conserved. Okay, so this is a fancy way of saying the mass does not change. So coming back to this diagram over here, where we see solvent particles and solid particles, as we know by the particle theory, you guys still remember the five statements? So one of the statements mentioned that different substances are made up of different particles of different sizes, right? So when talking about dissolving, the smaller particles will of course take up the spaces and fill those spaces that are left behind or that are in between the large particles. So again, we're applying the concept of the particle theory over here. And just like in the previous videos, I mentioned that for example, when we added 50 cm cube of soya beans and we had 50 cm cube of sago, when you added these two together, the overall, the total volume was actually lowered, right? Or also when we added 50 cm cube of water, 50 cm cube of alcohol, the total volume was less than 100 cm cube. And the same thing applies for here. The total volume will also decrease for this. And the reason behind is, of course, the smaller particles would fill in these spaces. Okay, so the total volume of the solute and solvent in dissolving, of course, may change, of course. Similar to what we've learned about the sago, the soybeans, water, and alcohol. So let's do these checkman questions. Question 1A, when a solute is dissolved in a solvent, say for example, when a salt is dissolved in a solvent, for example, water, the solute particles no longer exist in the solution. Is that true? Of course not, that's false. The solute particles, they are still in the solution, but you just cannot see them. Okay, now question B, when 10 grams of sugar is dissolved in 50 grams of water, the total mass of the final solution will be 50 grams. Is that true? No, it's not, of course not, this is false. As I mentioned earlier, mass has to be conserved. Okay, mass, so let me write it down, conservation of mass, the concept of where the mass will not change. So in the beginning of the reaction, in total, how many grams of reactants do I have? 60 grams. And at the end of the reaction, how many should I have? Of course, mass does not change. In the prior to reaction and afterwards, this should be 60 as well, not 50. Okay, let's see question C. In dissolving, the total volume of the solute and solvent is fixed, but their total mass changes. Is that true? Of course not. False. As I mentioned earlier, mass does not change. Mass does not change. And just now we just saw that the total volume of the solute and solvent is not fixed. It may change, of course. 
So over here, also, this part is wrong. It may change. It's not fixed. All right. So this wraps up this video on uh, dissolving. I'll see you guys in the next video then. Bye.